There's just one more. And in, then. In this chapter 9? This. Oh, are you talking about uh, like a book or something? Yeah. No, we're. This is. um. These studies, or the majority of these studies that we've been studying, uh, are taken from Haskell's book. Oh. You know, Stephen Haskell, the pioneer? Um, and so. Uh, I've put it in in a PowerPoint. You know what a PowerPoint is, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I've taken all the all the information from from that book, and I just placed it here, and we'll be studying it this morning. Okay. Okay. No worries. And our first slide. Um, gives us the Bible verse Luke 1 or I'm sorry Luke 11 verse 8 and the title is uh, or yeah I guess you call it a title it's our desire to receive okay so Luke 11 verse 8 says I say unto you that's each and every one of us here though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity and that word means persistence mm -hmm. he will rise and give him as many as he needed and so this was a, a parable that Jesus gave about a man that went to his friend's house to ask for bread in the of the right in the middle of the night the friend is like not really wanting to get up but because he didn't give up kept trying and trying and trying and trying and trying until the friend said I'm gonna give you as much as you want now <laughs> make sure you don't have to come back you know yeah so our desire our persistence in wanting to receive the Holy Spirit is uh, what is needed in order for us to actually receive it. You know, we have to be pers persistent. We have to um, show God that we really want it. Okay. Here's a. Uh, Inspired writing from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, um, page 90, paragraph 1. As the knowledge of the truth is received, let it be imparted to those who are in darkness, without God and without hope in the world. In such labor there is a variety of minds to deal with. And God will greatly bless his servants as they look to him for wisdom. The Holy Spirit will come to all who are what? Begging for the bread of life to give to their neighbors. Everyone for someone else when God gives us of his spirit it's not so that for us. that we could just understand it for ourselves but it's so that we can give what we learn to others and so if we're not doing that will God give us his spirit no okay but it like how it says, we gotta be begging for it. Begging for it. What do you mean to beg? Have you ever begged anyone before? Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Este beg. How do you say it? Rogar. 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 Y persistir en eso. 
persistir y la razón de acuerdo a esta cita es de que Dios nos da el Espíritu Santo para ministrar a otros para ayudar a otros solamente así nos da de su Espíritu aparte de eso no nos va a dar ¿Me entiendes? Yeah. Okay. Here is the promise of the spirit uh, the promise of the spirit ten times repeated. Okay? Luke chapter 8, I mean uh, chapter 11 verses 9 through 13. It says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And if a son shall ask bread of any of, of you that is father, Will ye give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will you will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give Uh, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. That ask Him. And so the emphasis here is uh, to ask, seek, knock um, until it is given. It's uh, mentioned here ten times. Of course we are to pray for it Zechariah 10 verse 1 ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field okay so the Holy Spirit is compared to rain And we saw that in the book of Isaiah as well. Uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. Lo compara la lluvia. Uh -huh. la, la lluvia temprana y la lluvia tardía. Si ¿Sí conoces acerca de eso en, en, el, en el campo, de las personas que esperan esas lluvias, y qué es lo que hace esa lluvia. Hay una lluvia temprana que, que brote Y luego la lluvia tardía Para cosechar Para que dé el crecimiento Ya para cosechar Es una temprana y una tardía ¿Okay? Y así se compara la, El Espíritu Santo Es una lluvia temprana Y una lluvia tardía la temprana fue en el Pentecostés va a haber una tardía para cosechar eh, todo lo que se ha preparado desde entonces ¿Sí? porque la semilla que es la palabra de Dios ¿verdad? entonces Dios está sembrando su semilla en cada uno da esa lluvia este ya para que cuando él venga pueda haber que fruto Fruit. entonces tratemos de, de recordar esa esa lección de ¿verdad? tenemos que tener la mentalidad, mentalidad de, de un campesino para tener una idea de eso ¿verdad? y a todos aquí nos gusta plantar más a algunos que otros pero bueno nos gusta, ¿verdad? Y lo hemos, yo, yo he tenido un poquito 
eh, experiencia pero bueno hay que tener eso en mente y es um, algo que nosotros Dios nos dice que pidamos pray for it si no lo pedimos es que realmente no lo queremos ¿verdad? y como acabamos de ver con persistencia beg for it rogarle a Dios Give una cita here's a quote taken from Acts of the Apostles page 55 and 56 but near the close of earth's harvest okay, there's that um, that farmer mentality but near the close of earth's harvest la cosecha final a special bestowal of spiritual grace is promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. So the coming of the Son of Man is the harvest, right? La venida de Jesús es la cosecha. This outpouring of the Spirit is likened to the falling of the latter rain. It is for this added power that Christians are to send their petitions to the Lord of the harvest in the time of the latter rain. In response, the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. He will cause to come down the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. Okay. He knows that the messengers whom he sees fit to send are weak, erring men. Does that sound like us today? <laughs> But <laughs> sounds like me too. But to all who give themselves wholly to his service, remember? Consecrated. Totally surrendered. Give themselves wholly to his service. His promises the, he promises divine aid. His own example is an assurance that earnest, you know what an earnest is, right? Uh, earnest is like if you ever made a, a deal with someone and um, there's money involved, an earnest is a certain, certain portion, like if you ever did a job where it's a large amount and you said okay well I'm gonna give you this amount so you can begin and then the whole amount after you're done the earnest is that first small amount okay that's what it is that's what that earnest means okay um, his own example is an assurance that earnest persevering supplication to God in faith oh no this is not the this is the, the that's my mistake this earnest is uh, is another meaning yeah earnest is uh, yes but um, it's it's kind of It's related to the words right after. So, earnest, persevering, supplication. So, it's like completely, I think, is what it means. But let me, uh, let me make sure. Let's do a little search here. Define earnest. Good faith. Okay. Yes, I think that's that's a that's a good way to put it. Uh, says right here. Result from, result from, or showing sincere. And intense conviction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. That's another way to put it, but yes, that's what it is. Um, 
qué fue lo que estamos viendo que de buena fe te recuerdas de buena fe hay buena fe o de mala leche o buena buena leche no, no recuerdo qué era que estamos viendo era una película este en buena fe es la palabra earnest um, sinceros con convicción Perseverance supplication to God in faith, faith that leads to entire dependence upon God. Um, and so that's something that we could ask ourselves, are we entirely dependent upon God? Do we have that uh, faith? Uh, if not, we need His Spirit. Um, and unreserved consecration to his work will avail to bring to men the Holy Spirit's aid in the battle against sin the battle against sin that is for the most part why we need the Holy Spirit and God gives it to those that want to overcome Consecration, consagración, este, completamente rendido a Dios. Es lo que se requiere para recibir. A precious experience. Notice uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 2 through 4. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. And his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning, when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth, by clear shining after rain. Have you seen a day like that? As as it was described? Well, that's what it's like to have the Holy Spirit. And of co according to these verses, we know that we have the Holy Spirit. Um, it's an experience that you know when you have it. Does that make sense? The verse number two makes that very clear. It says, The Spirit of God, this is uh, Samuel speaking, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me. This is because he knew that it was the Spirit of God speaking. You see? His word was in my tongue. It's an experience that you'll know. You'll know that it's God speaking either through you by you um, and according to the verses here it's, the description is that it's like a beautiful morning after rain had just fallen with no clouds a uh, cool breeze you know a beautiful day and that's what it's like to have the Holy Spirit Here's another quote taken from Education, chapter 95, um, or page 95, I should say, paragraph 3. They knew that his sympathies were still, were with him still. Let me read that again. They knew that his sympathies were with them still, that is, with the disciples. They knew that they had a representative an advocate at the throne of God in the name of Jesus they presented their petitions repeating his promise whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it unto you faithful to his promise the divine one exalted in the heavenly courts imparted of his fullness to his followers on earth 
his enthronement at God's right hand was signalized by the outpouring of the Spirit upon his disciples. Does everybody understand that? Si entendiste esa parte. Cuando Jesús se fue a la diestra del Padre, es cuando él pudo mandarles el Espíritu a sus discípulos. Fue en el Pentecostés. Cuando, cuando Dios comenzó su, uh, su trabajo ahí a la diestra del Padre, cuando llegó ahí con Él, comenzó ese trabajo que se tenía que hacer para sus discípulos. Y es cuando les mandó el Espíritu Santo. ¿Ok? By the work of Christ, these disciples had been led to feel their need of the Spirit. You understand that? Under the Spirit's teaching, they received their final preparation and went forth to their life work. And so as soon as they received the Spirit, what happened? They went to work. All right? Mm -hmm. This is where thousands were converted No longer. Yeah, as a frío. As a frío. Tiene un frío. ¿Quieres pagar o? Ah, estoy bien. No sé cómo se sienten ustedes. You guys cold? No. Okay. Ya sabes, eres la la que está encargada. No longer. <laughs> no longer were were they ignorant and uncultured no longer were they a collection of independent units or of discordant and conflicting elements okay. antes de esto antes de recibir el espíritu dice aquí ¿verdad? que ellos uh, no estaban completamente unidos Todavía ten, tenían conflictos entre ellos, diferencias, discordias, todas esas cosas tuvieron que remover. ¿Qué? Okay. I think they had to. Yeah, both. Oh, okay. Right. Ajá. Uh -huh. Uh, they became of one mind first and this was the result yes no longer were their hopes set on worldly greatness they were of one accord of one mind and one soul Christ filled their thoughts is that pretty uh, clear when he sends his when he sends the spirit, what is he sending? His thoughts. It's right here. Christ filled their thoughts. The advancement of the king, of his kingdom was their aim. Okay. Si agarraste esa parte que llenó sus pensamientos. Entonces los pensamientos de él. Eso es lo que les mandó. Su espíritu. Su, la mente de, de Dios y de su hijo. They were of one accord, one mind. Uh, the advancement of his kingdom was their aim. In mind and character, they had become like their master. And men took knowledge of them. That they had been with Jesus. It was right there that when they saw them who did they see Jesus they saw Jesus see, because they had the mind they were full of his mind another way to say it is full of the Holy Spirit same thing okay receiver bears nine kinds of fruit okay, we're talking about fruit Remember? 
Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is, number one, love. Two, joy. Three, peace. Four, long-suffering. Five, gentleness. Six, goodness. Seven, faith. Then, number eight, meekness. Number nine, temperance. These are the, the nine fruits that all of us should bear. Okay? And all of them together become the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives all nine. How about that? The Holy Spirit gives all nine. So, yeah, because it's the fruit. It's the fruit kind of, of the Spirit. Kind of fruits. Kind of fruits. Mm -hmm. well, if you have the Holy Spirit, then that's Right. So, are we? Can we know if we have these things? Yeah. yeah. And if you have these things, only God, through His Spirit, can produce it. The spirit of the spirit of Antichrist yeah. can can reproduce the spirit. That's a sub yeah. that's another spirit. Yeah. There you go. This is the evidence mm -hmm. that if you do have the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says it continues to say in verse twenty three, against such there is no law. Wow. Against such there is no law. Now people with you know with with another spirit teach that this means that we are not to keep the Ten Commandments. That's not true. When you keep the Ten Commandments, you are fulfilling the law of God and only God is able to give you that strength through His Spirit to keep it. That's why it says, if you have these things, you are not... In other, in other uh, verses, it says you're no longer under the law. Uh, does that make sense so far? Okay, so if we have the, if we have love, uh, will we keep the law of God? Yes, the, the, the law of God is the law of love. If you love God, you won't have any idols before Him, right? If you have love towards God, you won't, um, you won't say His name in vain. Uh, you'll keep the Sabbath. You don't sin if you have love, right? That's why it's the law of love. You won't do any um, ill towards your neighbor, right? You won't steal, you won't kill, you won't take his wife, you won't do any of those things against your neighbor because you love your neighbor, see? So that's why he says against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. And this is the flesh is the fallen nature that tends to uh, do that which is wrong. That which is sin. It leads us to sin. Okay? When we have the Spirit... Uh, we must be crucified. We must crucify the flesh with all the affections and lusts. So that means affections. How do you understand affections? What are affections? I believe it's our emotions. Our emotions. Our emotional state of mind. Uh, for instance, when Satan rebelled, 
uh, there were people or angels that um, were affectionate towards him. And even though they knew that he was wrong, they joined with him. Be because they were emotional towards him. They were affectionate towards him. And so out of emotion, they joined with him. They became devils just like him. And so our affections need to be where? According, yeah, maybe they need to be crucified. In Colossians it says, set your affections on things above. So our affections need to be linked to Him, right? When our affections are linked to Him, then everything that that we feel are gonna we're gonna feel for that which is right, right? For that which is good, for that which is holy, for that which is sacred, for that which is which comes from Him, uh, we'll we'll see eye to eye with God once uh, we crucify our natural affections. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the cross. Pick up your cross. Tenías preguntas o si entiendes? No? Si? Okay. Okay. Está clarito, ¿eh? The receiver bears nine kinds of fruit, and here's the here's a a quote taken from Testimonies to the Church, Volume Nine, page one sixty nine. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, and peace. Discord and strife are the work of Satan, and the fruit of sin. If we would as a people enjoy peace and love we must put away our sins we must come into harmony with God and we shall be in harmony with one another let each ask himself do I possess the grace of love have I learned to, to suffer long and to be kind talents learning and eloquence Without this heavenly ab attribute, will be as meaningless as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Alas, that this precious treasure is so lightly valued and so little sought by many who profess the faith. Okay. Uh, when God touches our lives, when He uh, begins to uh, to speak to our hearts and our minds. This is the experience that we should have. Here's seven manifestations of the Spirit. Isaiah eleven, two, and three. Remember the seven spirits that we read in Revelation. This is what it's referring to right here. Okay. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. And understanding. The spirit of counsel. And might. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears so in other words the the sight is going to be a spiritual sight the hearing is going to be a spiritual hearing okay that's why the bible says he that hath an ear let him hear okay because we got to have spiritual ears 
not all who actually hear will understand, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why he spoke in Proverbs, in uh, object lessons, so that those that um, were hearing could actually understand what was being said. Parables? In parables, yes. So these are the seven manifestations. These are the, in Revelation, God calls them the seven spirits. Um, seven ways that God manifests himself through his spirit. Okay? It will help in every lawful line of business. The spirit of God gives us um, wisdom in those things that are lawful. Here's uh, two examples. First one is Exodus 28 verse 2 through 5. And then Exodus 30 verses 30 through 5, 35. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron. Who was Aaron? The priest. He was the high priest. For Aaron and thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. That they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So uh, the Holy Spirit was the one that prepared Aaron for that work as well. As we shall read. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, and a broided coat, a mitre and girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. Verse or chapter 30 verse 30 and onward and thou shalt anoint Aaron that word anoint where does it come from or what how else is, does the Bible use that word anoint yes the spirit the anointing of the spirit um, and his sons the anointing of Aaron and his sons and consecrate them Consecration. What, did you say something? Oil. Oil. There you go. Yes, right. Uh huh. The oil. The oil of gladness. Yes. That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generation. Upon man's flesh, that is, those who were not. Um, of the lineage of the Levites it says upon the man's flesh shall it, shall it not be poured neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it is, it is holy and it shall be holy unto you whosoever compoundeth any like it or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger shall even be cut off from his people and the Lord said unto Moses take unto these sweet spices staked and on onica and galbanum these sweet spices with pure frankin frankincense since of each shall there be like a like weight and thou shalt make it a perfume a confection after the art of the apoth apothecary tempered together pure and holy so that was the instance that uh, that the priests were to use in the sanctuary which represent prayers by the way right? receiver is God's representative those that receive the Holy Spirit John 20 verses 22 and 23 and when he said and when he had said this this is Christ speaking 
he breathed on them and su and thus said unto them receive ye the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost whosoever sins you remit they are remitted unto them and whosoever sins you retain they are retained and so in other words they minister unto others that's what it um, it refers to in verse 23 but this right here the giving of the Holy Spirit at this time when he breathed on them was a earnest of Pentecost does that make sense now the earnest of Pentecost Luke 24 44 it opens the minds to comprehend the uh, scriptures we read this one when we uh, studied the uh, personality of the Son, because that's what Christ did here in these verses. Notice verse 44 and 45, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Notice what happens next. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See? So this is what the Holy Spirit does. It opens our understanding. That we might understand as well. This has happened to me many times. And it's okay when it does happen. Because that means that God is uh, giving you of his spirit Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 through 6 it's fatal to reject the Holy Spirit for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened with the Holy Spirit and have tasted of the heavenly gift which is the Holy Spirit and were made partakers of the Holy, Holy Spirit and have tasted the good the good word of God. Now that's interesting. The Holy Spirit is connected to the word of God. So those that were partakers of the word of God are, are, or the Holy Spirit have also tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. So that's what it's, it's uh, the comparison of rejecting the, the Holy Spirit is, is likened to us putting Christ on the cross again. That's what we're actually doing when we reject the Holy Spirit. We put Christ on the cross afresh. Uh, by rejecting him and so was God happy about um, our sins putting the son of God on the cross no. and so he will not be happy if we reject his spirit right desire of ages uh, 587 in every age there is given to men their day of light and privilege a probationary time in which they may become reconciled to God so everybody knows about probation right mm -hmm. probation is uh, the time given for us to uh, know God it's the time that's given for us to repent time given for us to make our lives uh, give our lives to God it's the best way I could put it uh, or reconcile to God was total surrender total surrender we need to surrender every day but there is a limit to his grace did we know that there is a limit to his grace Hay un límite para su gracia. Uh, mercy pay 
Mm -hmm. uh, Mercy may plead for years and be slighted and rejected, but there comes a time when Mercy makes her last plea. The heart becomes so hardened that it ceases to respond to the Spirit of God. Then the sweet uh, whining or winning voice entreats the sinner no longer and reproofs and warnings cease. So you don't have a conscience there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. We no longer hear his voice. We no longer we lost. Yeah, very much. And that's what happened to Saul. Remember that? Yeah. God was no longer speaking to him through a prophet. Nor through the ministers of the sanctuary. Receive without money. Isaiah 55 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So this, uh, this eating, and this drinking. Uh, okay. Well, in primer lugar, dice come, come, verdad? Come. Y qué dijimos que era la palabra de Dios? Es como comida, verdad? Okay. Entonces, el vino. Uh, es doctrina doctrina eh, la leche eh, la, la Biblia dice que es también la palabra ajá pero es como ahorita lo que estamos estudiando uh, es leche Esa es la palabra sencilla la palabra cuando, ajá, cuando apenas estamos a, empezando oh. the sincere word or the sincere milk of the word uh, es aquello que, que es claramente revelada en la, en la Biblia es como leche uh -huh. y dice ven a beber, ven a comer sin dinero y sin precio okay. es completamente gratis ¿eh? no se compra el Espíritu Santo Así como no se compra la palabra de Dios. ¿no? Es gratis. Cuando Dios la revela, no nos cobra. No. Restores wasted life. Joel, chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately entonces Dios da eh, la lluvia temprana es dice aquí Él nos da la lluvia temprana de una forma moderada and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first and the floor shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil okay. so aquí otra vez estamos viendo las uh, las figuras Ten tenemos el trigo tenemos el vino y luego también dice el aceite yes. ¿Eh? el aceite ya todos sabemos ¿verdad? pero el trigo la palabra de Dios El vino es la doctrina de Dios, la enseñanza. Okay. Y todo esto cuando Dios manda esa lluvia, que es el Espíritu Santo. Uh, verse 25, and I will restore, va a restaurar, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. 
Entonces Dios restaura todos los años que perdimos en la vida pasada. Ok. Aquí hay una cita. Here's a quote taken from education. Uh, page 106. Paragraph 1 and 2. The plant grows by receiving that which God has provided to sustain its life. So spiritual growth is attained through cooperation with the divine agencies. More than one, right? Okay. As the plant takes root in the soil, so we are to take root in Christ. As the plant receives the sunshine, remember the sun, the sun of righteousness? As the plant receives the sunshine, the, the dew and the rain, so are we to receive the Holy Spirit. So the sunshine, the dew, and the rain are compared to what? To the Holy Spirit. If our hearts are stayed upon Christ, He will come unto us as the rain, as the latter, and former rain unto the earth. As the sun of righteousness, there it is, He will arise upon us with healing in His wings. We shall grow as the lily. We shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The wheat develops first the blade and then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. The object of the husbandman in the sowing of the seed and the culture of the plant is the production of grain, bread for the hungry and seed for future harvest. So the divine husbandman looks for the harvest He is seeking to reproduce himself in the hearts and lives of his followers, that through them he may be reproduced in the hearts and lives. Okay. ¿Qué es lo que qué es lo que Dios quiere hacer a través de esta lluvia? Nos quiere reproducir su propia imagen su propio carácter en nosotros. It has much to do with that message. Uh, how? Uh, we'll, we're going to look at that once we get to, to that um, prophecy. Words are spirit. Okay. John 6:63. This is why the God connects the word with the spirit because it's actually um, they're bound together mm -hmm. it is the spirit that quickeneth what does that word mean? Life. it gives life the flesh profiteth nothing that's our uh, human tendencies it profits nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are Life. Okay. That's why he compares them to food, to wheat, to wine, because they give life just like food does. Okay. I'm pretty sure we're all ready to eat, right? <laughs> we're almost done. God, while well, I was talking about the physical food, yeah. and Brother Tomas knew what I was talking about. Okay, John 1, 1 and 2, and then we're jumping to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, we know that um, this is speaking of Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. And verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth and so the word God Christ and the word are synonymous they're all one and the same okay the word Christ and God that's it Oh no, give me a 
second. <laughs> I think I turned off. Uh, let me see where we're at. We're at 23. We got three more to go. Okay, bear with me. Almost done. The study of the 109th Psalm and regulating their lives by it brought the Spirit of God. This is uh, Pentecost. This is what happened. Uh, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of the names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs to be fulfilled needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas which was guide to them that took Jesus for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry this is the one that betrayed Jesus now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Aseldoma. This, that, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric, or office, let another take. Okay, that, that word bishopric is uh, office. Wherefore, of these men, which have uh, accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection and they appointed two Joseph and Barsabbas who was surnamed Justice and Matthias and they prayed and said thou Lord which knowest the hearts of all men Show whether the whether of these two men or these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of the this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place and they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the eleven apostles and so before they were able to receive the spirit by by fulfilling that prophecy yeah. yes and you could actually look up that this is exactly what it says but on when i looked it up on the king james it says uh instead of bishopric it says uh office and it, he was uh judas needed to be replaced before they received the the outpouring okay notice this quote in Desire of Ages so it may be now instead of man's speculations let the word of God be preached let Christians put away their dissensions and give themselves to God for the saving of the lost let them in faith ask for the blessing and it will come the outpouring of the spirit in apostolic days was the former reign and glorious was the result but the latter reign will be more abundant all who consecrate soul body and spirit to god will be constantly receiving a new endowment of physical and mental power the inexhaustible supplies of heaven are at their command christ gives them the breath of his own spirit the life of his own life the holy spirit puts forth its highest energies to work in heart and mind the grace of god enlarges and multiplies the faculties and every perfection of divine nature comes to their assistance in the work of saving souls 
through cooperation with Christ they are complete in Him and in their human weakness they are enabled to do the deeds of omnipotence. Mm -hmm. The Word of God with the Holy Spirit searches the deepest of uh, recesses of the heart. And we read this one as well already at the beginning. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so the Holy Spirit which is in the the word uh, discerns our thoughts <coughs> and intents verse 13 neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto his eyes of him whom we have to do. And that's the end. Alright, let's go ahead and bow forward first. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. Father, we pray that each and every one of us, as we meditate upon the word, that we would receive from it the life that you are wanting to give us your spirit uh, father we pray for each and every one that was able to watch pray that for those that will watch in the future as well uh, precious promises father that uh, you give us as we consecrate our lives to thee as we surrender all father help us dear father help us uh, to make this our daily task and we also pray for uh, the physical food that we will now, now partake of.